Welcome back to Pacific Drive. Before we head out to our next objective, we have a fax. Welcome all to the third meeting of the Society of Radio Reconstruction on today, March 2nd, 1950. Dr. Turner, thank you for inviting us. Please take the stand and show us this extraordinary gadget you've been... All right, our ultimate goal is here. We can find some information that should help us go deeper there. Uh, but there's quite a few stops along the way. First up, I'm going to hit G1, which is unstable. And I just realized how to tell whether a zone has stable or unstable or chaotic energy to get. And it's not whether the zone is unstable itself or has high instability. It's simply what it says on the top right. So if you look up here, this... If I mouse over it and then I press V, it shows details. That means stable anchor, so that means it's going to have stable energy. G3, also stable. But D2 is unstable, so I should find unstable energy there. And this is also unstable. So yeah, heading to G1. I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Hey driver, sorry about all that mess with Oppie. Th 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 there's no question, Oppie is a, is a, a once-in-a-generation genius. I I've watched her manipulate wavelengths with nanometer precision without batting an eye. <laughs> So, I had to see her go from being the sharpest person in the room to what she is now is disappointing. This place, it leeches away your sanity day by day. So for, for Abby to live here in complete isolation, locked away with only bad memories and expired medication, nothing good comes of that. I'd feel a hell of a lot better if I knew why she suddenly cares so much about the remnants. Speaking of Oppie, you're not gonna like this, Francis, but I'm starting to think we can't do this alone. Look, it, it's not that I doubt our abilities, but no one knows the zone like that old man. Uh, you heard what she said. She'll sabotage this remnant before helping us. Right. Well, she'll come around to our jobs. No, she won't. Nothing in the 13 years we spent in R&D proof that she's open to working with anyone. She dug her heels in so deep that she wrestled everyone down into the grave with her. I... I can't be involved if she is. What are you talking about? This is the entire reason we stayed behind. To write the record of the zone. Not about the experiments and the technology, but to tell the legends of the land. I don't want anything to do with her. I, I don't want to talk to her. I, I don't want her advice. I, I, I don't want to hear her goddamn voice. This isn't like you. What's going on, Francis? Is there something I should know? No. <sighs> all your work in limb R&D, all the time you spent, your entire career, your entire life, you sacrificed it all for Arda, and how did they thank you? with a black hole in your resume where you can't tell anyone what you did. You couldn't even tell people where you wiped your ass for 10 years. So no, I I'm not letting this go. Not for me, but especially not for you. Th 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 that's not, Never mind. You know, sometimes I wonder how much of you staying here was actually to hunt these legends or if it was because you had nowhere else to go. We got a message here. Sadly, that's about where the cold hard facts end. Listeners, I tried. I really did. I started my investigation in the usual fashion, digging up every piece of public record I could get. The paperwork is maddeningly typical up until 1955. Census records, soil samples, weather reports, hand-drawn survey maps, the beginnings of satellite photos, all readily available for anyone with the patience to walk themselves into a county office. Those materials don't tell me much, and I quickly am forced to turn to more dubious sources. Before the downing of multiple passenger planes and the subsequent establishment of no-fly zone in 1962, crude aerial photos are taken and circulated. This is where things get interesting. I find fuzzy shots of what appears to be entire mountains relocating overnight. Buildings disappearing and reappearing at random. And lakes filled with water or light, depending on the time of day. The resolution is dubious, making them 
inkblot tests in their own right. They are the stuff of dreams among amateur investigators and conspiracy theorists alike. The most outlandish, improbable, and extremely unverifiable stories came from creatures. People rumored to have jumped, tunneled, hot air ballooned their way through the walls. If they're to be believed, there is much to be uncovered. But more on that later. Lynn technology is not paraded around in the press for long. As the government withdraws acknowledgement that it ever existed, the public's interest similarly begins to wane. Last verifiable activity is an exodus of ARTA employees from the zone, beginning in 1981 and followed swiftly by a full decommissioning of the zone in 1987. After which, those 3,600 square miles are sealed away and left behind with no explanation. Two, minutes away from the populous, perfectly normal city of Seattle, with decades of history and secrets locked inside. And that is where I'm left to fill in the enormous, ill-defined gaps. Hey, how about we try to vacuum up some eggs? Oh, that is so fast and satisfying. Fifty-four eggs just from two cars. I think you do need a lot of them for any sort of recipe, though. Into the hundreds, if I remember right. Okay, time to head to Tobias's marker. It says Junction D1, Battery Farm. Oh, and it looks like it's a highway point. Cool. All right, what do we got? Okay, first off, I've loaded up three locations on your ARC device map. You see them? Yeah, head to whichever strikes your fancy. You, you're sending them to the missions? Sure am. We're going to use this. My optical vasilizer. We shouldn't use that. Why not? I, I mean, it's, it's, it's been decades. It, it, no way that thing is in any sort of working shape. I've been fixing up in secret, and I'm sorry. Don't be mad. It's gonna be a surprise for your birthday. Oh, I've gone ahead and made an itty bitty modification to your headset driver. I've hooked up the basilizer here to modulate your scan function. Think of it like, uh, or like an extra layer of mayonnaise on your technology sandwich. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what are you using the basilizer for? Uh, 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 no spoilers. We have to tell the story from the beginning. Driver. Get ready to feast your eyes on the visions. <laughs> okay, that's new. Belching barnacle. Yeah. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Told you about the mass hallucination. Hundreds of people, 30 seconds of crazy, yada yada. But there was one instance where that event and the remnants intersected. The story of Laura Cesari. Laura worked at Ana as an executive secretary. She put in her hours, but she spent her evenings with a real passion. Painting. When the hallucination event swept through, Laura was overtaken like everyone else. But for her, the visions didn't stop. She tried painting them but grew frustrated at her inability to recreate what she saw. Now at first, Anna wrote her off as one of the many whose brains got scrambled by what they saw. Until, Laura stumbled across a rusty can of paint in the woods. It was a remnant. Once she started using this paint, the visions in her paintings began to come true. She painted feverishly for over a year, chasing the visions the entire time. Until the day the paint ran empty. And then she disappeared. Like all remnant holders do. Now that we know the remnants in the mass hallucination are related, maybe Laura's visions can help us out. Looks like there's a big power source over here. Alright, and it's unstable. 
Ooh, there's another healing thing. January 15th, 1950, Agenda. Issues arising from Reginald Stanley Robinson's minute-taking. Correct use of Oxford comma. Appropriate levels of alcoholic consumption during versus after SRR meetings. Effects of latter upon former. Arising concerns. Uh, this is where your theory comes in, Francis. Uh, you tell him. Oh, look at me babbling away. Francis, you, you explain it. it. It's so good. No, it's just... Uh, I'd rather not. Hey, come on, we talked about this. You should be proud of your work. Toot your own horn. Yeah, I... I it, not this time. Okay, well, uh, Francis' theory, his entire branch of research was that the zone exhibits a property seen nowhere else on Earth. Every phenomenon that occurs here leaves its fingerprint forever on the physical space. So he created this device to pick up on these uh, sub-physical after effects. How did you explain it? Uh, it was like identifying a whale's favorite color using only the wake it leaves behind. Uh, the rest was science mumbo jumbo. It's a form of electromagnetic imprint. Uh, anyway, it was a long time ago. Uh, uh, and what a better time than now to try it again. Hold on. You see these? Oh, I can scan them. Okay, but one thing at a time. Back to meeting minutes number three. Arising concerns. Dr. Ophelia Turner articulated a difficulty being heard amongst lively male discussion. Dr. Ophelia Turner presented data detailing number of interruptions by other SRR members. Action items. Members to raise their hands before speaking during presentations. Open discussion to be mindful of interruption. Reginald Stanley Robinson to catalog all such. AOB, whiskey tasting courtesy of Dr. Ophelia Turner. Why is whiskey tasting in quotes? What are they really doing? Because apparently it's not tasting whiskey. What is that? Cool. Man, I really wish the game paused when you were reading notes, because, like, Christ. Let's scan the batteries. Plasted power pod. Oh, and another thing, we're installing new transformers and battery farms across all facilities as of this week. Folks, this is an extensive upgrade. That's going to take a few months. Now, uh, you're going to notice a few changes in some of the technology we implement. We're switching out some transformers. We're using shielded systems wherever we can now because interference is so bad. And uh, we're trying a new type of battery. Some of you will be cleared to work with this technology and some of you won't. But I can't skirt around this one. Whether you're allowed to work with it or not, you're sure as hell going to notice it anyway. I trust you well enough at this point to know you won't ask questions that you know you shouldn't or ask your friends and your colleagues anything that puts them in a difficult position. Just know the technology moves fast these days, and when you need to know, we'll let you know. The Slim stuff has been good to us, and it's part of our job to respect the rules and keep confidence, okay? So, got that, everyone? I'll speak more on this with those of you cleared for the limb briefing at midday. Everyone else, keep your heads down, got that? Yes, yeah, quite interesting technology. Oh, yeah. I should go grab the power, huh? You know, I'm pretty close to, like, dead. This seems like a good idea.
I swear to God, if you grab my car... Okay, we need to go scan that. Hold on, what are these? Neon Reef. Teletype auto script. At first I thought I was seeing things after, well, you know, after that incident when so many of us saw things, and then they promptly told us to never talk about it. I figured this was just another hallucination, something else I shouldn't log or report. Like how we don't talk about the things that chase us, or the files at Red Meadow, or the weird weather, or... I know, I'm getting off topic. Point is, whatever this stuff is, it both responds to and seems to create light. I think we're looking at something similar to glowing algae. Similar to those, uh, dino flagellates. I've got some notes here somewhere. I'm pretty sure this material is infused with... Neon? No, that can't be right. Anyway, my point is that I think we could actually use some of this stuff, and I'd really like to talk to Dr. Talk to Dr. Turner about this, but her office isn't taking calls. What's happened to her lately? Is she still in charge? Recommended tool, thermal vacuum. I don't have a thermal vacuum, do I? Just, yeah, a hand vac. And they said it responds to light. Yeah, it comes out. Oh, you gotta take, like, each bud. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of like the eggs where you can get it manually, but it's just not really practical. Let me try a normal vacuum. Okay, I guess the thermal vac, I'm guessing, makes light, so it comes out at the same time. But this does work a little bit. Well, hmm. it did kind of work. It's all floating away. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not really going to be able to get much without a thermal vacuum. What in the hell is going on here? Oh, right. It's a mural. The inverting doorway. No, I don't I don't like this one. Hey, uh, is it just me or does this mural look different before probably the instability messing with the paint over time it's been decades after all no something's something's definitely off hey uh where's our old notes from when we took a field trip out that way uh driver why don't you go ahead to the next one while we investigate this all right look at these like glowing Butterf butterflies. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah, I can't even look at it. Francis, you explain it. And maybe you've already seen them, driver. A freestanding bright blue door in its frame out in the wilderness with nothing around it. If you do see one, don't get anywhere close to it. I don't want to talk about it. He was pretty close to a doorway when it opened. It's called the inverting doorway. When the door is shut, it's safe. But once in a while, it opens, and everything near it is turned inside out. Mm. Its victims are mostly bears, squirrels, and birds. They all go through hell. Meat and bones on the outside, fur and feathers on the inside. It's not fun to see. 
Once, a group of hikers didn't heed the warning, and, and... No, 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 we're done here. Drive it. You see when you stay away from it, that's all you need to know. Let's go. Another healing thing, yes. Oh, stop trying to grab me, come on. Oh, we got another flat already. Jeez, I've had so many flats. Wait, what's wrong with this one? Oh, I need a mechanics kit. It's not flat, it's loose. my face. Healing thingy. Yes. Thank you. Do some more vacuuming. Bigfoot mural. Oh, the Bigfoot mural. <laughs> My personal favorite. What is going on back there? What did you, did you see there, Francis? Oh boy, oh boy, Francis! Look, look, look! Look here. It's different from our sketch when we visited in '82. Yeah, it's all scrambled, but the shape seems familiar. If you, if you tilt your head, doesn't that kind of look like Mount Olympus? <laughs> Francis, you flippin' genius! It absolutely is! Wait, 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 let's look back at the first one. What's different there? That, that shape right there, is, is that Hook Valley? Holy smokes! Oh, wait, pull up all the topographical maps of the peninsula. If we look around the areas where you'd get that view of Mount Olympus... See, Francis? I told you your basilizer would work! I... I, I don't think this is the basilizer's doing. Driver, we're on to something. Get to that third vision. Yeah, that battery wasn't good anymore. And it looked like it was going to explode or something, so I figured it's best to just toss it. Uh, driver, if you come across a mushroom like the one in the mural, 
do not eat it. No, no matter how tasty it might look. <laughs> You're speaking from personal experience. And let me tell you, it wasn't pretty. Oh, just thinking about it makes me want to puke all over again. You've probably passed the biogenerators by now. They're our source of power in the mid-zone, and one of the best demonstrations of renewable limb tech. Yes, these battery farms keep our lights on, but more importantly, they're also the only place in the entire zone where anomalized mushrooms grow. And guess who turned out to be the world's biggest fan of those mushrooms? Bigfoot itself! And the vision foretold its arrival in the zone! It started when those pods hanging from the battery farms were found chewed up. At first, they blamed it on the local wildlife. This was back when we used to have some. Then, the sightings of ten-foot-tall creatures started that didn't attract them attention on their own. Not until the first footprints were found. The Olympic Peninsula has always had a collection of Bigfoot sightings. But they were rare until Bigfoot had its first taste of the anomalized mushrooms. Then it couldn't stay away. And that's when the Squatches came knocking. They jumped the wall, set up camp, and they got to investigate it. Once they learned of the Sasquatch's appetite for these mushrooms, they cultivated entire farms of the stuff. For months, they propagated mushrooms and set traps. And for months, evidence mounted that Sasquatch was making its rounds and evading those traps. Until one night, the experts disappeared. Bigfoot got them. No question. Uh, come on, all eight at once. How is that possible? Never get in the way of a hungry Sasquatch. You know, I'm telling you, the helmsman never made it out of the zone. He died here. Not this again. I still don't know why you're so convinced he existed in the first place. Driver, back me up here. This is how the story goes. It was the winter of 72. A ship set sail down the Columbia River 100 miles east of here. The helmsman was overcome by bad weather, and, and while in a particularly foggy patch, the boat hit something, and the impact threw him from the deck. When he woke up, he was on a boat on this very lake, smack in the middle of the zone, with no idea how we got there. He had with him a ridiculous amount of cash and paid anyone and everyone to get him out of the zone. But no matter how he tried to leave, on foot, in a transport, he would always head into a fog and re-emerge on another boat. At last count, the great pileup was 20 boats high and 30 boats wide. Uh, a limb duplication glitch, nothing more. And you, of all people, blaming limb tech instead of a good old-fashioned mystery? It doesn't add up. Otis' favorite pastime was cutting people out of the zone. How could someone actually fail to escape? And a mysterious man with a backpack full of cash. And the one place he can't spend it. Seems awfully fishy to me. Yoink. I am very low on health again. Just kind of ambient damage from all the radiation. I think I'm safe from the barnacle though. Ah, oh, yes, I can make another health kit. Get off of me. Hey, can I scan those globules? Are they like a separate thing from the barn? Nickel? gone. Wait. Yeah, rotten egg. Um, I don't have time to read that. I'm gonna get killed by ten things. If I remember, I'll read it back at base. I'll probably forget, though. <laughs>
Woohoo! Am I driving over a trash heap? Oh, Jesus. Right overhead, you can spot the helmsman's body in one of the boats. No chance, it's a paint smudge, nothing more. <laughs> Believe me, it's true, I've seen it. Oh, bingo! See that pattern in the last mural? That flower only grows above a, a certain elevation. Put the three locations together, and, and you've got. A square mile in the northeast corner of the deep zone. Huh. The visions were pointing towards something the entire time. <laughs> hey, Oppie. You can stop pretending to ignore us now. Take a look at this fine work. We've pinned down the location for the source of the mass hallucination. That's where the driver needs to go. Well, what do you know? Well, I knew the basilizer worked. What did I tell you, huh? He still doesn't know, Francis. Know what? Not me. Not my story to share. All right, now we just need to get out of here. My theory. And that vassalizer, they're uh, illegitimate. Wait, wh what are you saying? I built that device to prove my imprint theory, and it was on the verge of getting the results I needed. But my research funding was running out. So, I forged the data. Not much, just enough to justify more time. I, I was so close, I knew the breakthrough was right around the corner. But Arda found out. That's why I was reassigned and my clearance revoked. Wait, wait, you told me you changed labs voluntarily. Eight years of research with nothing to show for it. And then, and then for that to happen, I, I couldn't face you. That doesn't mean your theory is wrong. I still think there's something to it. There's a common thread with some of the remnant stories, like the telephone switchboard, the ones that seem to recall the past somehow. Maybe the remnants access those imprints, read them like a needle in the groove of a record. Don't. You don't have to do that. It's a past. I, I don't care about it anymore. But listen, I've got this. Ah, oh my God. If we can just get the car to the mass hallucination source, what we find they can prove your theory. It's worth a try, isn't it? I'm tired of trying, Tobias. I've tried all my life, and it didn't go so well. Look. I don't have one of those fancy degrees that you and Oppie have. The closest I ever got to science was wiping down your land benches. But I saw the incredible things that you did with your research. Yeah, well, Arda didn't think they were incredible. I don't care about Arda. I believe in you. Always have. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do this with her. Oppie led the disciplinary committee that stripped my clearance and demoted me to a glorified intern. She sat there and decided how best to humiliate me. I never asked for anything. This one time I do, so I would, I would never have to talk to Oppie again. You didn't listen. Your remnant was more important than what I wanted. Francis, I didn't mean... I've had enough. Nine point five unstable energy. Yes. Interesting thing about that deep zone area you identified. I ran every coordinate in that area through the Arda database, and what turns up? That access logs with entry records for Doctor K up through March nineteen sixty three. What? No, the doctor died in nineteen sixty one, in the lab accident. 
So we were told. Then, I found access logs for both that deep zone site and Red Meadow. Years and years worth of activity. The Red Meadow Research Facility? But it was demolished the same year. A after the structural damage caused by the... Uh, lied about that too, didn't they? It appears so. The driver should give the Red Meadow ruins a visit. If Dr. K didn't die that day, I'd like to know what was keeping him so busy. So would I, but... Do we have time for this? We don't know how long the driver's got with that remnant. And that's why we need this information. Whatever Dr. K was doing relates to all of this. It may be the key to what lies at the end of the room for the driver. I... Uh, agree with you? God, I hate saying that. Driver, I've marked the Red Meadow facility on your route planner. Head there whenever you're ready. Let's build an advanced workbench. That should unlock the ability to make a lot of things. That looks pretty much the same as before. I researched and made a high capacity battery. So compared to our old lead acid, which had a capacity of 30, this has a capacity of 50 should make an even bigger explosion when it leaks and swells in the back of my car. I also researched the thermal um, vacuum, but unfortunately I can't actually make it yet. I don't have the materials. I think I need a couple more thermosap crystals. I got rid of the side flood lights because I realized they're really not going to be useful. Let's replace them with some side fuel tanks, which I've also just researched. Each one has a capacity of 15. I'm not sure what our base capacity is. I'm not really sure how much that is. Let's upgrade our own equipment. Right now we have the lead apron, which gives us 20% radiation resistance. Let's upgrade that to 40% radiation resistance. Really don't need the powered boots with the falling resist, but you know what? Why not? Because I think I need to get that to get the next one. Yeah, which gives me impact resistance. Not too expensive. But wait, I can't wear that and everything else, right? Or... How does this work? No, I think each category, so anything between the dashes, I think each one is like its own little upgrade tree. So I think if I get this... Yeah, I, I guess I get everything. Somehow I'm wearing a lead-lined lab coat and a padded parka at the same time. And I think I can even wear multiple gloves at the same time. I mean, I guess it's physically possible if impractical. <laughs> I'm not going to complain, whatever. Personal airbag even. Impact resist 45. It's really not that expensive either. Sure, why not? Anti-static gloves, going to block electrical shocks, it's going to take most of my marsh eggs, and most of my plasma. Half of my rubber, but you know what? I get shocked a lot. So worth it. We also have a new fax. Patel, can you hear me? We made it. It works. We're inside. Sending this out on all channels at midday exactly, August 4th, 1968. I knew this was a fif 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 fif. All right, well, I think I'm going to end the episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we are going to carve out a path to the Red Meadow Research Facility. <laughs>